So we at the Freescale Technology Forum here, and uh, this morning there's been a breakfast. Um, what, what happened there? <laughs> so uh, my name's Jeff Bach. I'm the marketing director for our industrial multi-market microcontroller business at Freescale. Uh, we just had a uh, press conference this morning to talk about all the microcontroller product-related releases that we've uh, had here at FTF. So for Freescale, uh, the MCU, the microcontroller, is a big part of the business, right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, about 40% overall of Freescale's revenue. Uh, last year was about $1.6 billion, and uh, you know, we're projecting that forward. You know, hopefully we'll grow up more than that this year. So, so what is the MCU? Where what does it, it go? <laughs> goes into just about everything. So uh, microcontrollers are ubiquitous globally in all sorts of applications. So some of the biggest areas where we see uh, applications for microcontrollers here is uh, Freescale as a whole entity is the automotive world. So uh, as an example, in the generation uh, uh, 7 series BMW as an example, there's over 70 or 80 chips inside of each one of those. Uh, also uh, uh, in the industrial space you have applications like uh, medical products, uh, smart grid applications, appliances, uh, consumer products, toys applications, uh, HVAC, thermostats, security systems, everywhere. Uh, in uh, your home there's hundreds of uh, microcontrollers all around you every day. So is Freescale one of the leaders in making those? Yes, yes we are. Yeah. We're one of the, the largest companies in the world for making microcontrollers, period have been for the entire history of our company, even going back to the days when we were still part of Motorola. So that's like uh, how many decades? <laughs> uh, at least uh, 30 years. In fact, uh, Freescale, uh, as a portion of Motorola, was one of the original innovators of many of the architectures that exist today in the microcontroller space. So uh, Freescale supports several architectures, mm -hmm. and why did they do that? Well, um, uh, for a, a large portion of it is because of our history. So we have uh, large uh, installation bases of, uh, as example, our power architecture devices that are used in uh, not just microcontrollers but also microprocessors and, and networking system where we're dominant in automotive powertrain where power is a dominant play. Uh, we have a legacy going back of our 68K and coal fire architecture, which is uh, something that's been used uh, uh, going back in the 1980s as the heart and soul of the uh, Macintosh computers and was built into a deeply embedded solution in the 1990s and was uh, brought forward uh, just a month ago with uh, another release of what we call Coal Fire Plus, which is the most recent announcement of those devices. Cold Fire today we use primarily for more application specific or even ASIC designs for customers who want a low cost, lightweight 32-bit core. And we've recently started investing uh, heavily in ARM-based architectures as well. Uh, ARM is a, a huge trend that's happening in the industry. Customers are, are looking at the software standardization that can occur by using ARM-based architectures and uh, there's been a real market pull for ARM as well. So we're building uh, the right uh, solution for customers based upon the architecture they prefer. So a year ago at FTF, uh, Freescale announced the Kinetis, the Cortex M4, yeah. and that's maybe the first or one of the first Cortex M4 designs? It was the first Cortex M4 to be broadly sampled in the industry, and uh, it's been a remarkable success for the company. Like there was a slide where there was uh, 9,000 partners working on it, or yeah. something like that, yeah. or what so, is it going on? Yeah, there? so we've sampled 30,000, over 30,000 samples thus far, shipped over 15,000 development kits. Uh, we have over 10,000 customers engaged. We've trained over nearly 10,000 customers in the past year between us and our distribution partners. So it's uh, just been a, a, actually a whirlwind of activity happening around Kinetis. So, so far it's sampling and it's testing and it's developing, but it's not yet an actual product out there. Yeah, actually the second half of this year will be ramping into production. We've got uh, huge uh, demands for us to, to ship uh, production quantities of the first M4 platforms uh, the rest of this year. And then uh, going forward, we uh, uh, have a broad extension of that uh, portfolio are coming over the course of the next year as well. So we committed to do 200 devices in the next 18 months at FTF last year. And uh, over the course of the next six to eight months, you're going to see the rest of that whole portfolio, that 200 devices, start to be available. Is there a possibility that some of the things that were previously in other architecture might switch kind of over to the, the, our, the Kinetis for some reasons. Why would they do that? Uh, well, um, you know, what we've said is that we're going to be using ARM in the future for kind of our broad portfolio for the general embedded space. What that means is we're going to have uh, scalable portfolio devices that go down to well under a dollar and 32K flash or below up to multiple megabytes of flash on the high end as we extend the portfolio out. In the past, we, some customers may have uh, looked at other alternative ARM providers for those kinds of solutions or even perhaps other uh, architectures inside of Freescale to get that kind of uh, compatibility, uh, but they may choose to use ARM now, and that's really what our strategy has become. 
Is there, are, there, are there tools to, if you develop a highly embedded software and some of the other architecture to kind of port it over? Or? Uh, other architectures, like you mean uh, other ARM architectures or free scale architectures? Other free scale architectures? Oh, Is well, there a if, way uh, to customers, like, um, if reuse? customers, yeah, if the customers writing code in C, uh, if they use uh, coal fire from free scale or power, uh, our Code Warrior development tool chain has all of the compilers built into that same development tool. So uh, you can, uh, if your code is written in C, you can, I shouldn't say easily, but relatively quickly migrate from one architecture to another. And particularly as an example between Coldfire and Kinetis, we've set it up so the peripherals are consistent. The tool chain is an example with IAR or, or Kyle also support uh, multiple platforms. And if you use our operating system MQX, on top of it, that also creates another abstraction there where it's very straightforward to go from one to the other. And we have customers, by the way, that are using both cold fire and looking at ARM and trying to be able to switch between them based upon the right peripheral set. So one of the reasons to use Freescale is that you provide long-term support? Correct. And yes. software? Uh, and the, yeah, we, the software enablement that we offer, as an example, our tower systems, uh, uh, you hope you've seen the, the Make It Challenge we have here. It's a design challenge based upon the tower platform. Um, that's been uh, just one EDN's innovation award for the development tools uh, category to allow people to do rapid prototyping. The software solutions that we offer, are they all the way up to the application layer. Uh, for reference design and software is uh, we believe the best in the industry, particularly for products like uh, embedded microcontrollers. We have, our, again, our own operating system, MQX, as well as third-party solutions available in the marketplace. And then long-term uh, support and reliable supply. So we commit, you know, on our product longevity program to 10 plus years of supply for any new devices that we're launching in the marketplace. And you have partners in Europe and USA and you're getting even more into Asia and stuff like that? Uh, well, actually, you take a look at our, our business is actually relatively equally spread between Asia, Europe and America. So uh, we were just speaking in there. I spent a few years working for Freescale and in China, uh, building up our team there. And uh, you look at opportunities for design and opportunities for growth in our business. China and uh, Asia is an area where there's a huge opportunity for us going forward. We've had a relative historical strength in, uh, in Europe and America. Thanks.